match up with the state? Um, that's a good question. That's um, I mean, other than that spot, you know, a little, like, if we went in with him, I think we could, we could give him a lot of problems. But we have to figure out ways without him, you know. So we match up pretty good. I mean, they've got, you know, their their two wing guys are really good, Reeves and Stevens. And their freshman guard's good. What is it, Bolton? Uh, and obviously Mike Watkins is a monster. Uh, he's just a big, strong human. But I mean, they they're an experienced team because of the NIT run last year. So even without Tony Carr, they still have pretty good experience. They played a lot of games. They played a lot of games, and those those two guys are high-level wing guys. I mean, they're 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 probably the best team we've played, in my opinion. So far, how would they how would they do in the A10? Good question. This year, they'd be right up at the top, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good it's a good gauge for what the best eight ten is. That's a good question. I don't want to I don't want to like uh, disparage them. You know, they may take that personally if we say you know, they're, they're a top level eight ten team. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like because yeah. uh, they're in the Big Ten. You know, which, I mean, they'll be in the mix in the Big Ten. They won't. I don't think they'll be. I think if they had Tony Carr, they'd be in the mix. Really, the big mix. Mm -hmm. They're, they're solid. Don't play with everybody. They've already played with everybody on their schedule. I mean, they beat Virginia Tech, which is a really good one. Yeah. Played Maryland close. They're, they're, they've played a lot of games, like you said. What do you know about the A-10? I, mean, I know you still have a couple weeks to go. But who's who's going to be better better team this year? Well, I think um, I think Davidson with Kevin Grady's good. They've lost two games without him. So that becomes an issue. How bad is this issue? I don't know what it is. I think it's a big right. um, I think Dayton's better. They're good defensively. They played a hard schedule. I think Rhode Island's very good defensively. I don't think great offensively. Uh, St. Joe's is good offensively. Who that is? St. Louis? St. Louis is you know, a below average shooting team, but a good team. So those are the best teams to me, and then everybody else is... Oh, UMass is one that... UMass has unbelievable pop, but they're erratic. So it's hard to say, like, if they can get it all together. Are you getting the sense that this team is going to be able to compete throughout the 8th season, rather than hit a wall like you did last year? Um, that's another good question. I think we have some issues we have to deal with before we can say that. Like, I don't think we've played good enough to compete in the A-10 right now. So all I can judge on is how we've played to this point. To this point, we haven't played consistent enough to, to, be, a, to be a good A-10 team. So I think, you know, part of that is we get Hughes back, get a little more settled in our rotations. The more our guys play, the better. And if attitudinally we can adjust a little bit, then I think we can become a factor. Do you feel like having played a tougher non-conference schedule, you have a better sense of that at this point than you would have maybe a year ago? Um, I can answer that to help myself, but not really. I mean, these are still games you should win. Like if you're a, if you're a good mid-major team, every team that came in here, you should have been. No disrespect to them, but I mean, we were winning those games at Akron. How about that? So, if you can win the games at Akron, you better win them at Duquesne. That's the way I do. Do you need to see a little more out of Austin and Amari? With, with Mike not playing as much, they, they've got a lot on them. Yeah, I think Austin has done a really good job of being pretty much what he is every night. You know, he's very consistent. He's not great any night, usually. But he's pretty solid every night. And then Amari's been really good or just okay, right? Like he made, he's had turnover problems too. Years. So they need to, the good thing is, is they've gotten experience. The bad thing is, is they haven't shown yet we can throw it to them consistently and score. 
But again, like, there's not many freshmen center around the country that can do that. So just getting good defensive effort and solid play out of them is a good thing for a young big kid. So they've had good years. Like, I'm happy with where they are. Do we need more? Yeah, obviously we need more. But, but you know, we'll see how they just have to keep it aggressive. As you hit conference play and some tougher games, do you see your rotation or your bench shortening a little bit, or will it stay? Like you mentioned before, you got to keep playing those young I games. think it, it depends. It depends on who plays well, who can go out and grab it, who doesn't play well. I would say that it probably is going to shrink a little bit, although it's going to be, it's going to expand a little bit because Kellen's going to play. It's, it's pretty much obvious he's going to play. To me, I mean, I know pretty much what I'm going to get from him. That's the key in this, is knowing what you're going to get. So at the end of last year, at times, like, he was getting more minutes than Titus was getting. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, is he going to be Marcus out? Probably not. But he still is going to give us solid minutes because he's strong as an ox. He's smart. So that that's adding one more guy. And then at some point, you know, we have to decide, well, sometimes we're going to play when Hughes comes back, will we play bigger at the four spot with Brotroff and Hughes? Or will we play smaller with Hughes and Frank Hughes and Williams? Because, you know, look, I think Frank's played – not great, but getting better. And Williams, we know what Williams can do when he decides he wants to really play. He's our best player if he decides he wants to play. When, when do you think he'll be back in the starting lineup, or is that up to him? Um, unless something happens in the next 24 hours, he should be in the starting lineup for this next game. So it's more night. He was supposed to be in that two games ago, so. When you're talking about the rotation and the number of guys you have, is that something where that could change on a game-to-game -game basis where you say, okay, Tuesday I'm going to use these eight or nine guys, but then Saturday's game, different kind of matchup, different style, you could use a different eight or nine guys? Well, I started Frank against uh, Maine. against Maine because they had a big three-man, 6'8". I didn't want to play tomorrow, 6'8 kid. So that's really why I did it. Yeah, I think it's going to be like if a guy goes in and plays well, he'll grab more minutes. It's, but we're getting a little more settled. I think it's it's pretty obvious at times. So it's kind of like riding the hot hand? A little bit. I mean, so you think about it. Right now we have Hughes, Frank Hughes and Williams. And then we have Lamar, Mike Lewis, Tavian, Sincere, and Brandon Wade. Like that's a lot. It's too many. Right? That's seven guys, I think, for three spots. Is that right? Or eight guys. Maybe. That's eight, yeah. Good because you have better depth. You have better depth. So if we get hurt, it's really good. So I'll give you an example. What all the high, a lot of the high majors do now is they only, they only have 11 on scholarship. So you know why they only have 11? they don't want to deal with the management issues of having to deal with guys that are unhappy. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is, is if a couple guys get hurt, right, or a guy leaves and two guys get hurt, now you're short. Or if a guy doesn't pan out for you. But if you look at Jay Wright and them, they've only had like nine, ten guys. Now Pitt's in the same position, right? Two guys leave, guy gets hurt, now they're a little short. So for me, I'd rather manage it, which is a pain in the ass. Don't print that. <laughs> pain in the butt. Pain in the... I'll put it in brackets. It's a pain. It's a pain. Yeah. It's, it's hard management. Much harder than you would have. We have 13 in scholarship? We have 12. Well, 12 that are playing because Swingle's redshirt. But then you add Kellen, so that's 13. But he's not yours. He's football scholarship. No, but he still, he still has. He still wants to play. It still counts, play. right? No, not Kellen's, for basketball. Not right. No, but Kellen wants to play. Yeah, but he doesn't count as one of your scholarships. No, no. Yeah. But so we have 13 guys that are all in the mix. Right. That's what I meant. So nine's perfect. Ten's pushing it. And 11, 12, 13 are really hard. Especially, let's say, 
Let's just hypothetically use this off the record. Let's say since 